Hey, how's it going? This is Todd Baginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and the partner and CTO at Canvas. This is another video in my series of videos where I'm giving you deep dives into the capabilities of the Power App templates that we've created with Microsoft. In particular, this video is going to be diving into the Out of Office Power App. You can get this Power App exact same code that I have here and run it and use it and install it in your Power App environment too. To do so, you go to web.powerapps.com and right on the Home tab, scroll down, click See More, and then select Out of Office. This will give you a preview of the app you can look at here, and then you can also open it up in your Power Apps editor and install it to your environment. As you can tell from the title of the app, this app is designed to turn on and off your out-of-office settings. And it's also designed to put calendar invites out there on your calendar in the event that you'd like to create a new event and also set your out-of-office. So there's a few different things we're doing in here with the Outlook calendar and the Office 365 Outlook connector that allow us to do all those things. To start with, I'd like to point out that if you come up to the View menu and you look at the data sources, you'll see the Office 365 Outlook connector right here. To add that to a Power App that doesn't already have it, you can come into Data Sources, click Add, and then you can look through here to find the Outlook connector right there. If it's not in this list, you just click New Connection, then find it, authenticate to it, it'll pop up in the list and you're ready to go. One thing to point out about the connector is the name of the connector that you see right there, Office 365, this is going to be the same name that you use when you call methods on it. So the first thing we see when we run the app, like I'll do right here, is that right here on the home page, it is pulling events in my calendar that are longer than six hours, and it's suggesting them to me that these may be things that I would be out of the office for. So how do we pull this list here of calendar events? Let's take a look at how we implemented that real quick here. You'll notice when I select the gallery called Select Times that displays the calendar events here, its data is set to future calendar events. You'll also notice in the items collection here, we're sorting that future calendar events collection by the start column in ascending order. We create the future calendar events collection inside of the on start or on visible I mean for our application. And here's what that code looks like. I'm gonna get past the code that does other things in the app and just focus on the calendar here. So the first thing we're gonna do is set a variable called my calendar ID and we're gonna do a lookup to here's our Office 365 connector. We're going to call the calendar get tables method. That method takes in a, uh, this gets us all of our calendar tables, and then we're going to return the value there. So inside of this collection right here, we are going to look up where the display name is equal to calendar and then return the name property. This gets us our calendar ID, which is where we need to start to get everything else related to our calendar. We put this in my visible and on visible, I should say, on the very first page in the app because we need this calendar ID to do all kinds of operations with the calendar throughout the application. The next thing we're going to do is get my user ID variable. This is the Office 365 users connector, which you also saw when I showed that to you in the data sources. And I'm going to call the myProfileMethod.id, and that will return the currently logged in and running users ID. We'll use that throughout the application too, so that's why we get it here and on visible in the first screen in the app. 
Then we're going to set some variables for UTC now and UTC next. These help us convert the date values that people type into the application for when they would like to start or end a particular calendar invite and allow us to pass it into the Outlook API. We use them right down here below. So now that I have these pieces of the puzzle ready, the next thing what I can do is I can create a collection called All Future Calendar Events. To create that, I'm going to loop through by using the for all. I'm going to loop through Office 365.getEventsCalendarView. I'm going to pass in that calendar ID that we set at the very beginning. I'm going to pass in UTC Now and UTC Next. As you can see, when you highlight an item in Power Apps, it's just like Visual Studio. Up at the top, it shows you the method name, and here it says it's taking in the calendar ID, the start date, time offset, as well as the end date, time offset. By picking the values property on that method, that returns me all of the calendar events. So as I loop through all of them, I am going to set the values in my internal collection equal to the values that are returned there. So this is everything that builds up all my future calendar events. But I talked about how this app just displays ones that are longer than six hours because most likely you're not going to set an out of office for something that's less than six hours long. So how do we do that? That's pretty simple. We just come down here, we create another collection. This one is called future calendar events. Notice it's not all future calendar events, it's just future calendar events. Here we apply a filter to the all future calendar events collection we just created above. And we do that where the start and the date are greater than equal to six hours apart. So when you have your start and your end greater than equal to uh, six hours apart, that means that you've just filtered the all future calendar events down to the events that are greater than or equal to six hours in length. So if we go back and full circle connect the dots here, we've got our future calendar events collection now. And the future calendar events collection, again, you can see is what we've bound to the items collection here inside of this gallery. Now, as you step through the application, and I will do that right now, you step through the app, you say, okay, I've got a, something here I need to mark myself as out of office for. You select that event. It looks at the values that were associated with that from your calendar, and it sees that this one started at 8 and was over at 4 for my hockey tournament. Then you can set what type of response you would like to send. So this is obviously personal because I'm playing hockey. Then what kind of email access do you have? Well, intermittent. Maybe I could check my email in between games if it was something real important. Who should people contact while I'm out? This uses an Azure Active Directory people picker we built inside of Power Apps. You can watch another video that I have here in my channel to understand how we built that. But by default, what it does is it picks the manager that you have marked in Active Directory. And then you can say regarding anything at all, or you can say marketing or this project or that project, whatever you want. Essentially, this wizard is building up a response for you that you're going to set in your out of office. Then I hit next. You can see the values that I picked throughout the wizard are inside here. And so this is the inside my org response. Maybe I'd like to send one to people outside my org as well. We just copy the top one to the bottom one and let you reword it as you like. When I hit save, this is actually going to set my out of office message. So let's take a look at the code that actually does that because that's more using the Outlook connector to really affect your out of office message and create a meeting invite if one did not already exist for this appointment. So here's the code behind the button that actually creates our internal and external message and then associates an event with them. 
the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set my internal message equal to the text inside that text box. Pretty simple. Then I'll set my external message and I'm going to do a check here. If send response outside my org is true, then you just use the text inside of the response outside underscore five text box. That's the one you saw at the bottom of the screen where we copied the inside org to the outside org content. Otherwise, just go with blank. This basically says, did they click the checkbox to send it outside their org? If they did, use what was in the text box for outside my org. If not, just use blank for the external message. So now it's time to actually do something in Outlook. Here in the Office 365 connector, we're calling set automatic replies setting. As you can see, as I click from variable to variable here that we pass in as these parameters at the top, I'm setting the status and then I'm checking. If send response outside my org is true, send it to all. Otherwise, don't send it to anybody. So that's the external audience that we just set with this if statement. Then we pass in the start time, the end time, the internal message, and the external message. And that code right there just set your automatic reply in Outlook. The next thing we do is we look if an event ID was detected. Event ID got back set back in the first page. Essentially what we do is we check to see if you were the meeting organizer and if you did, we have an event ID um, uh, available for us at this time. That event ID would tell us that you need to create a new, or if the event ID is blank, I should say, that would tell us that if you want to put a new calendar item on your calendar to block this out, you need to make a brand new one because you were not the person to create that meeting that was on your calendar. However, if it's not blank, that means that you did create that meeting and therefore we're just going to update the item, which happens in this patch operation. So if we're creating a new meeting invite, essentially this is the line of code that does it. Again, it's the Office 365 connector. We call calendar post item and we pass in these arguments. There's our calendar ID again. We have to tell it which calendar we want to work with. Pass in the end time, the start time, the title, how we want to show up, the body of that, and the content type for that body. Then we're going to set that event ID back to the ID that is returned to us from calendar post item. So that's an important note to make. Not every method you'll call on a connector will just be a method that does something for you and doesn't tell you anything back. In this case, when we create the calendar post item, we get the ID back for that particular event we created in our calendar. So be on the lookout for that because there's more than one connector where you can actually get these output values like that after you perform an operation. It sure is a lot easier to do this than it is to query the calendar again and look for the matching calendar based on the same type of parameters we use to create that calendar invite. Now in the event that the event already existed, we're going to call calendar patch item just like this. So patch item is an update operation. It takes in the same arguments here and just updates the content of the existing calendar invite. So that's pretty much how you can create yourself calendar invites or update them as well as return them into a Power App and make a list of them and also how to set your out of office message programmatically. Hope you enjoy the app and the code walkthrough. See you next time.